today, as you see from my screen, we're going to learn about the paranasal sinuses. So you would think, what are paranasal sinuses? So paranasal sinuses are like air-filled spaces in the bones of the nasal cavity. So you hear a lot of people say, I have sinus, but what exactly are they talking about? Because everybody have sinuses. So when they hear, so my sinus is draining, it's when these areas are filled with mucus. You understand? So yes, so today it's all about the paranasal sinuses. So we have four paranasal sinuses. They're the frontal sinus, the maxillary sinus, the sphenoid sinuses, <clears throat> as well as the ethmoid or the ethmoid sinuses. So it's F E M S. So I call them the FEMPs. So frontal, ethmoidal, maxillary, and the sphenoid sinus. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about them as well as their nerve supplies. So we're going to start with the frontal sinus. So you can see the frontal sinus. Just follow my cursor. The frontal sinus, you can see it in the blue here. So you'd expect the frontal sinus to be in the frontal bone. Very, very easy. So a thing about the frontal sinus is that we do not have it at birth. So we call it rudimentary. So that means it's absent at birth. You develop it as you grow older. Okay? So that's not very hard to understand. And a thing about it is that it opens in the middle meatus. So what is the middle meatus? This is basically somewhere here in the middle of your nasal cavity. You would have your superior meatus, middle meatus, and inferior meatus, right? So the middle one is where the frontal sinus would drain to. So you can see it here in the lateral view. This is the frontal sinus here, and it would drain down here into your middle meatus. So a point to note, guys, that this is the anterior view of the sinuses, and this is the lateral view of the sinuses. So here, the frontal sinus, rudimentary at birth, and it drains to your middle meatus. So the blood supply of your frontal sinus is your supraorbital artery. So the supraorbital artery comes from the supraorbital foramen right above the eye. Since it's right there, why not supply it? So the blood supply is the supraorbital artery, and guess what's the nerve? Super easy. It's the supraorbital nerve. So the frontal sinus is su super, super easy to remember. It's rudimentary at birth, it's in the frontal bone, it opens in the middle meatus, and it's supplied by the supraorbital artery and the supraorbital nerve. And another thing about it is that it's drained by the submandibular nodes. So the submandibular nodes are down here. So lymph node that drains these sinuses or the submandibular lymph node. So one little thing, or one last time to go over the frontal sinuses. Say it with me. So, the frontal sinus is rudimentary at birth. We don't have it at birth. It drains in the middle meatus. It's supplied by the supraorbital artery and nerve, and it's drained by the submandibular nodes. So, that's frontal sinus. So, let's go to the next one, the next big one maxillary sinus. So, you can see the maxillary sinus here in green. So guess what? This is super important. It lies in the bone of the maxilla. As you would assume, it's called maxillary sinus. And guess what? It's the largest of all the sinuses. You can see it right here. Anterior view, it's green. Lateral view, it's also green. And you can see how large it is. And it's pyramidal in shape. So any sinus that you see that is pyramidal in shape is a maxillary sinus and guess where it drains it drains the same place as the frontal sinus where did i say the frontal sinus drain again yes that's the middle meatus dora the explorer moment there so it drains it also drains in the middle meatus the three things about it so far it's the largest of all the sinuses it drains in the middle meatus as well and it's pyramidal in shape. So what's the nerve supply 
on the other supplies of the maxillary sinus. So I think here, because it's so big, that's why I, this is what I tell myself, because it's so big, you need lots of things to supply it. So I call it one, two, three, four. So this is the one, two, three, four sinuses. Sinus. So that's how I remember it. So it has one lymphatic drainage. It has two veins. It has three arterial supplies and it has four nerves. So one node, two veins, three arteries and four nerves supplying this sinus only. Do you see how important this sinus is? Right. So let me just start with the nodes. So guess what? It's also drained by the node that drained the frontal sinus. What node drained the frontal sinus again? Good. The submandibular node. I'm sure you guys got that. So it's drained by the submandibular node. That's number one. Number two now is our veins. It has two veins. The facial vein as well as the pterygoid plexus of vein. So the easy one to remember is the facial. It's right in front of your face. So it's drained by the facial vein as well as the pterygoid plexus of veins. That's two. So the three things now are the arterial supply. And guess what? It's drained by the facial artery. It's right there in your face. It's drained by the facial artery, the infraorbital artery, as well as the greater palatine artery. So that's number three. Facial artery, infraorbital artery, and the greater palatine, or the GP artery, as I'd call it. And the last thing is the nerve supply. So because the infraorbital artery drain it, guess what nerve? The infraorbital nerve supply it. And we have the anterior, the middle, and the posterior alveolar nerve also supplying this sinus. So remember, anything with alveolar, if you watch my previous videos, has to do with the teeth. So because it's so close to the teeth, this is how I relate it, I would say it's drained by the nerve that drains up here. So it's the anterior, middle, and posterior alveolar artery, not artery, nerves, uh, supply these sinuses. So let's go over the one, two, three, four again. So it has one node, submandibular lymph node, two veins, facial veins, and pterygoid plexus of veins. Three arteries, facial arteries, infraorbital artery, and GP or greater palatine artery, and four nerve. The first one is infraorbital nerve. Then we have the anterior, middle, and posterior alveolar nerve supplying this sinus. So one last thing about the maxillary sinus. It's pyramidal in shape. It's the biggest of all the sinuses and it's located in the maxilla bone. Okay, so let's move on to another sinus. So we did F, we did M. Now we're going to go to the sphenoidal sinus. So when we talk about the sphenoidal sinus, we're talking about this one. So the sphenoidal sinus is in the sphenoid bone. So that's in the base of the skull. So it opens in the sphenoidal recess right about here. So that's the sphenoidal sinus in the sphenoid bone and it opens in the sphenoidal recess. That is so easy to remember. And the arterial supply for it is the posterior ethmoidal as well as the internal carotid artery. So the internal carotid artery is like right beside it right here so it's definitely would drain it as well as the posterior ethmoidal artery the nerve supply guess what posterior ethmoidal nerve can you see this trend guys if it's an artery it's also a nerve they have similar names so remember arterial supply posterior ethmoidal and internal carotid artery nerve supply Posterior ethmoidal nerve as well as the pterygopalatine ganglion. 
that's a big one to remember but you guys will get it it's a terrigo palatine gangland so i call it ppg so the sphenoidal sinus is by the posterior ethmoidal nerve as well as the terrigo palatine ganglion right and guess what the venous drainage is a pterygoid plexus of vein as well as a cavernous sinus and the lymphatic drainage for this sinus is the retropharyngeal lymph node so when you think about the sphenoidal sinus it's in the base of the skull so think about things about the skull and it's the word thing is it's not like the others where it's the maxillary sinus and you get it you understand the submandibular node this is the odd one out as i would put it so it's drained by the retropharyngeal lymph node so my last sinus is are these three little ones these are my favorite ones and they're the ethmoidal sinuses so they lie right here in the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone you can see it right here and we have and you can also see it right here we have an anterior group anterior means top we have a middle group and we have a posterior group so you can see them it's like three groups of them so i'm going to tell you about them right now so the anterior group here, it opens in something called the hiatus semilunaris. So right here is the nasal cavity, like coming down, the anterior one would be here, right? So you'd see anterior, middle, posterior, or superior, middle, inferior, just the same. So the anterior one, anterior ethmoidal sinus, would drain in the semilunaris. So it's like crescent, it's a crescent shape little thing right here crescent means shaping like a moon right here and the anterior ethmoidal sinus will drain here the middle one would open into the ethmoidal bulla and that's in the middle right here middle meatus ethmoidal bulla and the posterior sinus would drain into the sup <coughs> the posterior ethmoidal sinus will open into the superior meatus of the nose so right here the posterior sinus would drain so let me tell you a little bit more about the ethmoidal sinus <coughs> I repeat the same thing that I said remember I said there is an anterior group a middle group and a posterior group that's the most important thing right here and yeah those are our four sinuses but let me just probably go over probably you guys if you're if you guys are hearing this for the very first time you might get confused so let me just run over them what are paranasal sinuses these are air filled spaces present in the bones and they open in the nasal cavity so um we have four of them and i call them fems so that's frontal ethmoidal maxillary as well as the sphenoid air sinuses so the frontal sinus, the key thing that I'll tell you guys, rudimentary at birth, we don't have them at birth, opens in the middle meatus, blood supply, superorbital artery and nerve supply, superorbital nerve, lymphatic drainage, the submandibular nodes. Another thing, the maxillary sinus, I said it's the largest one. It's pyramidal in shape and it also opens in the middle meatus. The next one, sphenoidal sinus, right here. Sphenoidal sinus opens in the spheno-ethmoidal recess because you can see it's close to the ethmoid sinus. It opens into the spheno-ethmoidal recess. And the last one is the ethmoid sinus, and the ethmoid sinus has an anterior group, a middle group, and a posterior group. And the anterior group opens in the hiatus semilunaris, that looks like a moon. The middle one opens in the ethmoidal bulla. We like to eat bulla, so we'll remember that one. And the posterior group opens into the superior meatus. The meatus that is on top of the middle one is the superior meatus. So one last time, guys. What are the names of our four sinuses? FEMS. Frontal sinus. Ethmoidal sinus. 
maxillary sinus as well as sphenoid sinuses. So if you don't know anything or you didn't hear anything else that I said, remember the names of our four sinuses. Let's say them. Frontal sinus, ethmoidal sinus, maxillary sinus, and sphenoid sinus. So whenever you hear someone saying, my sinus is draining, it is these sinuses, these air spaces are filled with mucus. So my sinus is draining. Now you know exactly what they mean. And don't just say, me not have sinus, or you have sinus, me don't have it. We all have sinuses. It's when they become when they become inflamed, we say they're draining. But anybody you hear saying they don't have sinuses, just correct them because you heard it from Nikki on the DNN Medical Series. So that's all for today's video on paranasal sinuses, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any more questions, just drop them in the comment section below. Thank you, guys. Bye. See you next time.